Michelle Kruzik stars as Anna Mae Wong on the new Netflix series, Hollywood. I'm Tony Ruiz from Gold Derby. And Michelle, for, for people who, because I will admit, even as somebody who uh, loves Hollywood and particularly has an affinity for old Hollywood, I knew very little about Anna Mae Wong. So for people who aren't familiar, uh, explain who Anna Mae Wong uh, was. Yeah, so Anna Mae Wong was a uh, a silent movie actress from the 1920s who was able to transition into talkies. And uh, she started very young as an actress. Uh, she was Asian American. She was a third generation uh, US citizen. And uh, she fell in love with cinema at a very early age, dropped out of high school to pursue acting. And she had quite a successful career uh, very early on in her in, as an actress. And um, as she progressed, uh, it she really became a, a, a global star and a global sensation, but her relationship with Hollywood was quite uh, torrid in terms of, you know, she was always constantly stereotyped, didn't have uh, the best options in terms of the roles she was offered. And then uh, what you'll see in the series is uh, really the, the depiction of probably one of the biggest heartbreaks of her career, which is not getting into a movie called Good Earth, which she lobbied for. It was one of the best roles for her at the time because it was a Chinese role and ultimately she was not cast. Um, a German actress was cast and she lost that role to her and that actress subsequently won the Oscar for that role. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because I, I actually I, I am a huge fan of the book of The Good Earth and um, not particularly of the film, um, but even to me, it was a surprise that that uh, Anna Mae Wong was up for that for that role. Um, and so, when you're playing a real person like that, um, I've read, I've talked to people who have played real people in the past, and one of some of them like to go back and look at their work, and other people not so much because they don't want to feel like they're doing too much of an imitation. Um, what? How did you approach going back and researching her? Well, my first connection to Anna Mae Wong was through a filmmaker who had made a documentary about her. And that filmmaker, I think it was around maybe 2010 or 2011, had approached me with some interest. And I did some initial research on her. Um, that, that, it, that didn't end up working out. But um, when I was approached again with this role, I, you know, for me, being able to play such a legend, and she is really iconic. Uh, I really was interested in capturing her essence, uh, watching as much as I, I could. And in terms of my own process, I love research. I love finding material. I love uh, following behavior, finding um, my own way of trying to really be that person that for me is the challenge and that's also the pleasure of it so i consumed as much as i could find within the time frame that i was given and then once i was cast uh you know for me it was really trying to find the essence of who she was and um portray that yeah and when we first see her uh you know it's really in this almost like an episode of its in itself, where you have this kind of long scene opposite Darren Chris. Um, so she's, when we first meet her, she's kind of like, there's a certain bitterness to her. There's a certain, um, you know, she's kind of, kind of drunk herself into this kind of little corner. Um, what was the toughest thing to access in terms of, in terms of that particular episode? Yeah, that's a great question because that for me was the most challenging scene. Uh, my, I think because it was also my first scene into the series and, and physical shooting, that was the first scene up. Uh, I found it difficult to try and stay connected to what I was trying to attach as anime Wong behavior. Uh, and for me, that was just always the, the fine line of like, how much can I stay in that uh, technical thinking as an actor of, of this is how she would have done something or I think vocally for me it was challenging because she had a, a deeper register 
and a really gorgeous sound. I, I always loved listening to her. So that was something where really during that uh, shooting process, Dan Minahan, he was the director of that particular episode. He wasn't so concerned about me trying to be anime Wong. He was really more interested in the relationship between me and Darren. So, you know, for me going into it, I, I did feel a little bit daunted by trying to make sure I could capture what I thought she would look like as a drunk, <laughs> as a, re <laughs> as, as a, I mean, and, and I say that like not derogatively, it's more, um, it's more that uh, where we find her is that she's, she's, she's leaned into it heavily. And I think there were a lot of accounts that she was a heavy drinker. Um, she probably, um, I don't think she was a drunkard, um, but where we find her in that in that episode is that she's probably had a, a good night of partying, and and I think there was an original line that ended up getting cut out was that I had a party <laughs> by myself, <laughs> so um, it was a, a, a good humorous line uh, of her being just self-deprecating about that, which I, which I love. Well, and it's self-deprecating, and it's also, I think, there's also a certain isolation. There's also a certain tragedy, I think, to her. Um, and you get to see that. One of the things that's most interesting in that episode is that you actually get to see Anime Wong's screen test uh, to play the role in The Good Earth. So I'm, you almost get the benefit of being an actress, playing an actress, auditioning for a real part. So... Um, how much, how how familiar were you with with the Good Earth, and uh, either the film or the book before you shot that that uh, that audition? I was familiar with the existence of the book. I I knew that the book was very famous and had been uh, you know had been remade and had been made into a film. Um, but I didn't really know anything beyond that. Uh, I think um, when I took the dive into researching her. It was really my first time being exposed to actors in yellow face. I had seen, you know, bits of it like in Mickey Rooney, like those little excerpts you see, um, you know, that are often clipped when you um, are, see those excerpts of yellow face performances. But I never really had seen an entire film performed with actors doing it, uh, which I, I, I was really ashamed. Um, <laughs> it was really embarrassing for me uh, to see those portrayals and, uh, you know, no disrespect to Louise Reiner. Um, you know, I, I just thought that everyone seemed to be playing at what they thought was a Chinese person. And, um, you know, maybe I have too modern of, of eyes now, but it was really painful for me to watch that, to be honest. Um, yeah. I, I, my jaw was dropped the entire time. Um, and I kept thinking this won an Oscar, <laughs> but, you know, just maybe just a different kind of audience <laughs> back then. Which I think, I think gives a certain degree of, of uh, triumph to what happens to anime Wong at the end uh where we get to see her and you know we're going to go into what happens in the last episode where we actually see her triumphant and we actually get to see her uh win that academy award and i have to ask you know as a, you know because we're an award site um what was shooting that episode like that had to be uh just kind of like another worldly experience it was otherworldly maybe not for the way you might be expecting with this particular question i think that the way this particular role came to me um, where i am in my process as an actor now mm -hmm. i've been very much using the subconscious and dreams as as the context of how i approach my work and just if you think about that alone, it's otherworldly. And uh, I was having a lot of dream images around Anime Wong that ended up appearing on set that day. And I felt like it was a, a universal connection of saying, oh, you're in the right place to be doing this. Because I had really found myself in a place of questioning what 
what the point of Hollywood is. Um, just think, you know, I recently been talking a lot about just Asian Americans and invisibility and my own connection to what that means. And anime Wong emerged as the as the symbol and the embodiment of this theme. So for me to be playing her, having this connection to uh, this very pervasive feeling of being invisible as an Asian American in, in America, uh, I found myself tapping into some very deep-seated feelings around the subject matter. And here I am playing this particular scene completely it embodies it. And uh, suddenly, Ryan Murphy has written a scene that makes that invisibility visible. So I really felt like I was uh, a medium <laughs> for, every, for everything that I've just said and just for myself, allowing myself to really step into this position of creating this scene that never, I don't know if, um, I mean, in, in my research, I did not find that they uh, allowed her to audition for that scene. I, I, in my research, uh, they, they had her audition for the concubine role. Uh, so it was a moment to create this thing that may or may not have existed, but had been erased out of history. Not a lot right. of people know about it. So it, it was a very meta moment. Uh, and very mystical and spiritual for me. Uh, I think it was something that honestly I kind of had to do in order to get to the other side of my understanding of who she really is to me now, having having done some research and and what I think of her uh, prior to the show versus now. Prior, I felt a little bit, you know, like she was a tragic story, but now I see her as more of an uh, as a figure of empowerment. And it's, it's, I think, what's so powerful, not just about that scene, but uh, I think one of the most powerful things is when it cuts to, you know, these families of color, you know, you see like a black family and you also see an Asian family in that episode when they celebrate uh, her win, that it has to make you wonder uh, what it would have been like if we had had those, those trailblazers uh, be successful earlier than we have. Uh, what, do you think that there's still a degree of marginalization um, of not just Asian Americans, but but of, of multiple minority groups when it comes to Hollywood in general? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, listen. You know, I don't. I don't ever want to. I don't ever want to um, take away from the progress that we have achieved and Hollywood probably by comparison to maybe other fields is probably the most diverse and the most accessible. And I think in the best way possible, it does look to create new stories, um, but I don't know if in the execution of those intentions it ever gets achieved. Um, I do think that the conversation is happening and, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just really excited to be able to be part of that conversation. Um, but in terms of the marginalization of many underrepresented groups, yeah, it's, 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 they, you know, they've been in foul play for quite some time. And um, I feel like this series uh, talks about it in a way that is undeniable. And, um, you know, it's doing it in a way that's entertaining. Um, but it, in a way, it's also kind of spoon feeding you the obvious because quite honestly, if it didn't, I don't know if you would ever see this kind of uh, remarkable change. And, it, you know, I think in a way it has to be spoon fed because it's been over 100 years since anime Wong has been around and we're still up against the same models of systemic racism. So, yeah, it's I think it's still happening. Do you think that there's a certain degree of optimism with the series that that is necessary right now? Do you think this series has a, has an optimistic uh, feel that makes it speak to so many people? 
Yeah, I think so. I think that that the tone of this piece is quite unique. I honestly was surprised when I saw it because I was so in my own world of playing Anna Mae Wong and, and her tone is very different than some of the other characters in terms of what she's dealing with because where we find her in, in, in the moment of her coming out of uh, recovery or retirement. Um, but I think that based on the way the way audiences have responded online and just personally i think the message of hope and uh it, it never it never pretends to be it never pretends to be looking at this from a like gritty let's try and really break through this it really is trying to simply create what that fantasy looks and feels like and the uh, visceralness of that simply is a good feeling of like, oh, it actually feels nice to see people winning, people who don't usually win. And I think that's where the show was really successful because uh, if it may be tiptoed around it, the people who, uh, you know, might be naysayers. I mean, I mean, I think maybe they might be like, yeah, yeah, no, I like the grittiness of this. Um, but I think the people who are really paying attention to this are the people who are saying, you know, it's 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 really nice to finally see us win, to see us having um, these moments of triumph and victory. And it's undeniable. It's not something that is, um, you know, just there's there's just no kind of compensating there. Every every moment where there's this this moment of conflict, um, you know, it, it, it gives you the, the brightest option possible. And I kind of love that, that it's, it's bold in that way. And so daringly hopeful. Um, but I, I believe in that you do need visuals sometimes to actually see it in order for uh, other people to kind of, you know, run with it. Yeah, it's it's certainly a, a, a an optimism that we desperately desperately need right now. Um, Anime Wong, thank you. <laughs> see see how far I was caught up in it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, go to goldderby.com. Uh, make your predictions for the Emmys and stay tuned for more interviews throughout the season. Uh, Michelle Kruzik, uh, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tony. Thanks.